guys. Happy Wednesday. I hope you guys are all doing great. I'm here with Stella. See her in the background? She's being kind of nosy. I told her she could stay for our read aloud as long as she didn't disrupt anything. Um, I hope you guys are doing awesome. I was actually able to go up to the school for 15 minutes today to grab some things that I needed and I was able to get our read aloud. Remember when I told you we were going to start reading about Mal Malala Yousafzai? So this book is called She Dared. Um, it is nonfiction. So look at the front of the cover. What do you notice about the picture, first of all? So think about what we've learned about nonfiction. What do you notice about her picture? Is it real or is it a is it a, a drawn illustration? You're right. It is real. Um, so this is one nonfiction um, text feature feature that we learned about real photographs. Um, so this book is nonfiction. It is about Malala. So in case you didn't know, we actually have an elementary school now in Fort Bend ISD that is entitled. Um, or titled uh, Malala Elementary. So this is an exciting story and it is a nonfiction true story. So we're gonna read about Malala. We're gonna read the first chapter today and I'm gonna give you a couple uh, questions. This is not mandatory homework, but it is just to keep, get you thinking um, and get you working at home with reading. So um, we're gonna start. This is chapter one. Chapter one, a doctor in the making. The marketplace was a blur of colors and motion. With her mum, Malala walked amongst the sights and sounds and smells. The aromas of gasoline, fresh bread, and grilled meat filled her nose. Banners stretched from one side of the paved street to another. With words written in Urdu, the official language of her country. Does anybody know where Malala was from? She was from a country called Pakistan. Awnings jutted out above the road. A bright red rickshaw with one wheel in front and two wheels in the back zoom past a man on a motorbike who honked loudly. More men and women scurried on foot, zigzagging between the automobiles. There was energy in the warm autumn air. A man peddled his goods, CDs, DVDs, books for sale. That last word caught Malala's ear. She was almost done with the Twilight series and she'd need another book soon. Reading was important to her, education in general. It was in her blood. Her father was a teacher and even started, uh, uh, started Malala's school. Chickens clucked from inside a wooden cage on a cart. Another man yelled, cumin, turmeric. Her mom stopped, needing spices. Like ant hills, the spices were piled high in varying shades red, yellow, orange, and green. One strong gust of wind couldn't sent, could have sent the seeds and seasonings flying, coating the many stands, carts, and Malala's mom. So they're in a marketplace. So her, she's shopping with her mom in a Pakistani marketplace. So that's pretty cool. Malala noticed a girl of probably 17 or around, um, probably 17, around seven years older than her. Okay, so if the girl is 17, and she said probably seven years older than her, so 17 take away seven, what do you get? 10, so Malala was about 10 in the beginning of our story. Plucking apricots from a great mound of fruit, stacking one after another in her basket, the girl stretched her arm, her large belly getting in the way. From the girl's young age, Malala guessed it was her first child and she hadn't been married long. The next day at school, Malala thought about the girl from the market. Malala wondered how long ago the girl had stopped going to school so she could care for her husband. At 15? 16? It made Malala's shoulders sag. So if your shoulders are sagging, how do you feel? Hmm, probably sad disappointed? Girls should be able to finish school. But most Pakistani women, women's futures went in one of three directions, housewife, teacher, or doctor, with housewife being the most common. For herself, 10-year-old Malala had already chosen the third direction. She wanted to be a doctor. Being a housewife was respectable. Malala saw how hard her own mom worked to care for her family, and her father taught her how important teaching was. But Malala yearned to pursue a different path. 
She wanted to help people in her own way. So Malala sat up straight in her blue uniform, thankful to be wearing it, and turned the page of her textbook, following along with her teacher at the front of the classroom. It didn't matter what subject was being taught, she loved them all, but today her teacher lectured on the parts of a plant. Malala read in her textbook, the roots of a plant also absorb water and nutrients that are needed for growth. She was in year four of school, so that's like our fourth grade, year four. And Malala had many years of schooling ahead of her, especially in science. Science was an important pillar of a doctor's education. Her, figure, her finger slid across the book as she read along, flicking her eyes between the words on the page and her teacher. Malala was in her happy place. So her happy place was school, kind of like some of you guys and me. I miss it. I miss it. What Malala didn't know was that everything was about to change. The girl in the market had stopped going to school because she chose to marry, have children, and cook for her husband. But soon, Malala would be forced to stop going to school, all because of an organization that called itself the Pakistani Taliban. At first, Malala heard only gossip about a group of men who out of nowhere started to appear to, uh, in the north, northwestern part of the Swat Valley, a region of Pakistan surrounded by sky-high mountains. The Swat River wound through the valley from north to south with little villages and towns on either side. Mingora, the only city in Swat, was farther south. That was where Malala lived with her parents and two brothers. The men hadn't come to her city yet, but soon Malala saw them on the news on TV. They were shown in the markets, in the streets, in the hills, and the forests of the valley. They were strange looking. That was Malala's first impression of them. She looked between the men on the TV and her father com comparing. Her father chose to keep his dark hair short. Theirs was long. Her father had only a mustache. Some of his friends had beards, but they were trimmed. These strange men had long, straggly beards. So can you think, make a mental picture? So she's using words to explain what they look like. So they have long black hair, straggly beards. So they're using the words in the story to paint a picture in your mind because look, the picture, the book has no pictures. And so they're using words like straggly beards and long dark hair to paint a picture in our mind of what these characters might look like. And while her father often wore a shirt and trousers, trousers is another word for pants, these men wore camouflage vests over their traditional um, shawar kameez, shawmarkeries, I'm trying, baggy pajamas like pants and a long shirt. Like so many others, Malala wasn't sure what to think of these intruders, but how could their arrival be good when they carried knives and rifles or when they sometimes were stocking, wore stockings over their heads with holes for their eyes? At times, they also wore turbans. While Malala's father didn't wear a turban, some men did. The intruders seemed to wear turbans only in black, though. Whispers traveled from one ear to the next, nicknaming the strange men the Black Turbaned Brigade. But why was this brigade in her valley? What did they want? On their chest, they stuck black badges that pronounced Sharia law pronounced Sharia law, the principles Malala and other Muslims followed as part of their faith. Those words on the black badges confused Malala. She asked her father, Abba, aren't we already loyal Muslims? Malala studied the following, Malala studied and followed the Quran, the religious text of Islam. Why would they threaten us? Malala would soon learn that the black turban brigade didn't in interpret the Quran the same way as Malala or her family. The way the brigade interpreted the Quran meant they wanted to change Pakistan forcefully. And if they were successful, it would destroy Malala's hopes and dreams forever. Okay, so that was chapter one. I want you to either get a piece of paper if you have one and write down some things that you thought about and things that you wonder about after we read the first chapter. So it talked about her dream. What did she want to do? She wanted to become a doctor. Who was trying to stop her? So they were talking about the um, 
the Black Turbaned Brigade. Um, they were talking about um, the strange looking men that were invading her community. So I want you to think um, either aloud to somebody that's around you or maybe just in your room by yourself or write down some things that you wonder about. Do you think her dreams are going to come true? Do you think her dreams are going to be stopped? What do you think is going to happen in the chapters to come? And what do you already know about Malala? So she, we know she wants to be a doctor. What else do you think? So the, the title is She Dared. What do you think she dared to do? Do you think she dared to be different or do you think she dared to maybe stand up to other people? What do you think? And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye guys!